What's up guys, Queen of Reef here. So I've been getting asked a lot of questions. I've been getting asked a lot of questions about when you can finally add corals to your tank after you've gone through the lengthy, miserable process of cycling your tank. So in today's video, I am going to go over the four changes that you can observe in your reef tank that indicate that it is finally ready to add some beautiful fish and corals. I wish I could give y'all a timeline of how long this stuff typically takes and what you can really expect, but because no two aquariums are the same, it's really kind of difficult to tell. But if you see these observations in your reef tank, then it's definitely ready to get some corals in it. You know, if you want a healthy reef tank, you have to let the biological filter build up. This is where your patience is going to be seriously tested. You know, the longer you take your time with the cycling process, the less problems you're gonna see and the more healthy your reef will be down the road. The first step in knowing whether your tank is ready to finally add corals to it is making sure that you have successfully completed the nitrogen cycle. You know that you have successfully completed cycling your tank when you have gone through all three phases of the nitrogen cycle from ammonia to nitrite to nitrate. So the first stage in the nitrogen cycle is the ammonia stage. To get this phase going, you need to make sure that you have seeded your tank with some source of ammonia. Common methods of seeding your saltwater aquarium are, you know, using live rock, bottled bacteria, some kind of established media from somebody else's aquarium or even using decayed shrimps. Do make sure that you never cycle your saltwater aquarium using live fish, okay? The water during the cycling process is extremely toxic, particularly ammonia, to any kind of fish or marine life. And you don't want sad fish, so don't use fish in the cycling process. After seeding your tank with a source of ammonia and noticing a spike in that ammonia when you're testing your water, that, my friends, is the beginning of the nitrogen cycle. Make sure that during the cycling process, you don't move that source of ammonia from your tank. Otherwise, this will disrupt the whole process and your tank will stop cycling. And you don't want to wait all that time waiting for this process to happen for it to go away. Right? So about roughly 10 days into this, you're going to start seeing that ammonia convert to nitrite. Now, definitely don't add fish or corals during this time because nitrite is just as lethal to marine life as ammonia. We don't want that. No, we don't. There we go. So you will see these nitrite levels continue to rise until they peak and then level off, transition downwards into the next phase where it becomes nitrate. Once your nitrate levels start to rise, this is when you know that the beneficial bacteria is starting to establish itself in your tank. Only once you have observed these changes happen in your water parameters can you truly be sure that you have fully and successfully cycled your reef aquarium. The second observation that you need to make to determine whether your tank is truly ready to add corals and fish is if you have observed any algae blooms in your tank. Now over the next few months, your tank is going to experience quite a bit of algae, okay? It's gonna get ugly. It's gonna get ugly, you know, but don't become frustrated because this is a totally normal part of establishing a little ecosystem in your home. The types of algae that you will likely see will include stuff like green hair algae, the diatoms, cyano, Dinos, okay? Don't be afraid because most of these algae, they're fairly easy to get rid of. These algae are really unsightly, okay? They're really unsightly. You're going to hate your tank for perhaps a really long time. It can take anywhere from zero to 12 months, okay? 12 months, you will have an ugly algae-ridden tank. But just know that this algae is fairly easy to get rid of, especially stuff like cyano and green hair. You're gonna be fine. We all go through it. What you're gonna do during this time is you're going to add your cleanup crew. You're going to add your cleanup crew. I lost my refractometer. 
You're going to add your cleanup crew to your tank to help get rid of some of this algae at this point in time. Now make sure you only are adding some of your cleanup crew, not all of your cleanup crew, because they're, they might not have enough algae and whatnot to sustain it. And you know, once the cleanup crew has been doing well for a few weeks, then you can finally add your first fish. You know, if you didn't already know, it's time to tell you now. We, we are not hobbyists in the sake of keeping corals and keeping fish. We are literally just water keepers, okay? We're just the keepers of water. The third indication that your tank is ready to finally start adding corals is whether your parameters have been stable for a good amount of time. Because overall, the goal in this hobby is to just keep those parameters as stable as possible. As long as you keep your water stable, all of your livestock will thrive. No issues. However, keeping water stable, especially starting out, can be pretty difficult. So make sure that you are sticking to softy corals before you're jumping on into the more advanced stuff like LPS and SPS, right? Soft corals are really tolerant to changes in water parameters, so they'll be way more easier to learn from, especially starting out. These are the main water parameters you need to keep as stable as possible as you begin adding your first soft corals. Note that these parameters are only the things that you should keep in mind when adding soft corals only. Once you advance to keeping various types of LPS and eventually SPS, you will need to keep track of a few other parameters like alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium as well. The key here, the key here is just keep those parameters as stable as possible. And last but not least, coralline algae is actually a really beneficial algae to have in your tank. It plays an important part in maintaining your little reef ecosystem. Out competes other nuisance algae from taking over your tank. It is probably the best indication that your tank has reached a level of maturity and stability where you're finally ready to add some softies to it. Coraline algae loves stable parameters, so it means you're doing a really great job so far. And just when you thought this algae could not get better. It's also a beautiful color, okay? It's this gorgeous purple typically. It really just makes your reef look alive and come to life. So coralline algae is definitely one of the key observations to make to know whether your tank is ready for some new corals. So you made sure that your tank has properly cycled through the nitrogen cycle. You've observed some really nasty algae blooms. You've been checking on your water parameters regularly, been completing maintenance routinely, and those water parameters have been noticeably stable. You've also noticed some beautiful coralline is starting to grow over your rocks. You, my friend, are officially a reefer and your tank has successfully cycled. Congrats, congratulations. You are currently in the process of cycling your tank right this moment. Let me know in the comments below about what is the first coral you're gonna add. My first coral I added, geez, I don't even remember. Watermelon zoas. Watermelon zoas and, huh. Look, look, I listened and actually uploaded a video in a timely manner. And well, how else could I possibly describe it, okay? Sexy coral placement trick was sexy. Appreciate the sub, McReefers. I love thinking about reefs from a design perspective. Sometimes it can be a bit obscure, but I'm really glad that you like my explanation. And oh, look how far I've come from starting this YouTube channel. Started off as a crazy squirrel in a bad way and now we're moving on up and hey Chris you're very welcome <laughs>